Hey there! I'm here to share a quick overview of assignments and assessment features in Microsoft Teams. My name is Daphne Williams and I'm a former fifth grade teacher. I now work as a Microsoft Learning Consultant and also known as an MLC. My job is to help teachers and schools implement technology into the classroom. If you want to connect with me on social, I've added my name in some great hashtags you can use to tweet out your favorite takeaways from this session. Today's objective is to learn some quick tips on how to use Teams to create assignments and assessments for grading and feedback. For those of you completely new to Microsoft Teams, it's a digital hub that brings conversations, meetings, files, and apps all together in one easy to use location. If this is your absolute first time using it, I highly suggest that you check out some of the other sessions provided by Microsoft to help you build your collaborative virtual classroom. Formative assessments are used for quick and formal check-ins to help you gauge your students' understanding. As teachers, we use formative assessments all the time as a temperature check to see where our students are so we can adjust our curriculum or lessons to reflect their needs. I wanted to start off this presentation with one of my favorite formative assessment tricks using Microsoft Teams. So Teams makes it really easy to informally assess your students because it integrates with forms. On this page, I just want to give you a brief overview of what you're looking at. On the left-hand side, you'll see activity, chat, teams, assignments, calendar, calls, and files. I'm open a uh, Miss Williams classroom team, and we're in the mathematics channel of that specific team. Now, as I go to my channel, all I have to do is at mention forms in the conversation on my channel. I can really quickly create a new poll. So I'm gonna use this poll to see how many of my students remember what the word product means by adding kind of a tricky question. This is just an informal way for me to gauge whether or not I need to review the difference between sum and product. Down at the bottom, you can see that share results automatically after voting. And if I uncheck um, that box, it means the students won't be able to see the other students' answers if I want that to be anonymous or not shown at that time. As I send this, the post goes directly to my mathematics channel. I'm gonna actually head over to my general channel so I can show you what this actually looks like after one of my students has answered. Once again, these are just quick check-ins to get a temperature check of where your students are at. So this is just an informal question and you can see as students are answering, it shows me their answers. Summative assessments are all in one easy to use location in Microsoft Teams and it's found in the general channel under assignments. For the rest of this lesson, I'm gonna show you how you can use Teams to create digital assignments, grade easily with a rubric, and keep a grade book for your records. First, I'll start with a quick overview of how to use a Microsoft form as a quiz in Teams. From your assignments tab, you'll see any drafts or assigned um, assignments you already have. And I'm gonna quickly just choose quiz. You can see other quizzes that I've already created in the past, so you can just reuse them over and over again. Now, if I needed to rename this because I used it last year, I can rename that quiz, add any instructions that I need to, and just quickly assign it to my students. One thing that I love about using forms in Teams is not only can I reuse assignments easily, but it also will post it to my channel and my students know that if they have any questions about this quiz, they can reply directly to that notification to ask any questions before they hop into that quiz.
In addition to using Microsoft Forms for quizzes, you can also create full assignments in Teams, adding other resources for summative assessment pieces. Here, I'm planning to send my students a junk food opinion essay assignment. I can go to the Assignments tab, and that's where I'll create a new essay assignment. Down at the bottom, I'll just create the assignment, and I can use different types of resources to send an assignment to my students. So first, I'll add the name of my assignment, the title. Really quickly, I'll just um, add a tag to it to help my students easily identify the resources. I can add instructions for my students, and then I'm gonna add those specific resources for them. I'm gonna find a page in the student's class notebook that I wanna send to all of them in the handouts folder. And the reason why I'm doing this in class notebook is it's a really nice PDF and I wanted the students to be able to annotate and highlight all over the pages with their own digital inking devices. So once I find that um, resource, I just send it to all of them into their class notebook. But I wanted to add a separate resource to this assignment, so I'm going to add a Word document for them. I can choose one in my OneDrive if I wanted to send a template that I'd already created, but I can just add a brand new blank Word, to, Word document to them as well. So I'm creating the file name, but you'll see that it says that students can't edit this file. So I need to click on the right hand side to make sure that the students are able to edit their own copy. One of my favorite features is to actually add rubrics to help me with my grading. I have a couple of rubrics already made, but I wanna show you how easy it is to create a rubric all on your own. So I'm gonna start an opinion essay rubric. You'd wanna add a description to this and I'm not gonna fill out all the criteria. I just wanna show you how easy it is to actually create one from scratch. So I'm figuring out the different categories that I would add to my four point rubric and I can make it five points and as many of these different columns and rows as I need as I'm filling out that criteria. And once I'm finished with that, you'll see that it shows no points associated with this specific assignment, even though I had told it I wanted it to be worth 100 points. And the reason why is I need to make sure that my rubric has points associated with it. So I'm just gonna go in and edit it. And as I edit it, I'll just toggle on to make sure that there's points associated with this rubric. That'll help me with speeding up my grading process a ton if that's how I wanna use this rubric. I'll show you a filled out rubric in just a second. Now I can choose which students I want to send this assignment to. By default, it's all students, but if I wanted to differentiate and only send it to one or two of my students, I could do so. I can also set a due date and close the assignment past a certain date if I don't want to accept any late assignments. And after I end up sending the assignment to my students by using that assign in the top right hand corner, it'll actually show it on the general channel for all the students to be able to see. Now, some of my students have turned in their junk food opinion essay, so it's time for me to go in and grade their essays. One thing that you'll notice as I go into assignments to start grading is a couple of my students, it will show me that they've already turned it in. And another thing you might wanna notice is that these students are demo students, 
So their names are demo names, like MLC student one. But as you're grading as a teacher, sometimes you accidentally grade things on a sliding scale because you know what a student is capable of. So Microsoft makes it really easy to hide the student names and grade anonymously so that all the students are shuffled and you don't know what students you're actually grading and that way you don't grade differently than you would um, just based on using this rubric. So here you can actually click on the Word document that the student turned in and I'm just gonna go through and change some of the answer or some of the ways that I'm grading this student. So I'm going through that rubric that's completely filled out and you can see as I'm changing it, it actually changes the grade for this student. I can enter feedback and once I'm done with it, I can close it. And this student, I didn't send it back to them yet. So I'll just click and return it to that student. Next to assignments are grades. So as I go over to that grades tab, I can actually see that student's um, score was uploaded. If I need to export their um, export the spreadsheet to Excel, I can do so as well. There are a lot of different ways you can use this to create really neat, unique assignments with different resources, and you have all this really easy to use grading capability built into one platform. So I love Microsoft Teams when it comes to grading, especially with that rubric feature. Now that we're wrapping up this quick 15 minute session, I wanted to ask you to reflect on what you've learned so far. What quick tip on assignments and assessments from this session has been your favorite? Tag me on Twitter at WilliamsDTeach and use these hashtags. Let me know what your favorite tip on Microsoft Teams assignments and assessments was your favorite. Last, but certainly not least, if you wanna learn more about implementing Microsoft into your classroom, we have a great educators center called microsoft.com forward slash education. One of the things that Microsoft does is it has a lot of training courses to help you learn and implement all of this technology into your classroom. And because you sat through today's session, I wanted to offer a code that you can redeem towards points on that um, website. So go ahead and take a screenshot of this right now so that you don't forget to enter it in so that you can redeem the points for today's session. Thank you so much for joining. My name's Daphne Williams. I really appreciate you being here.